For number three, <clears throat> we want to tell which of the following series cannot be found convergent by the ratio test, but can be found convergent by the comparison test. So this is a little bit of a trick question, um, because if you know why you use certain tests in certain situations, you should be able to answer this relatively quickly without testing every one of these for both tests. That would be kind of crazy in this for this type of question. But remember that <clears throat> if it can't, if it can be found convergent by the comparison test, then it is convergent. So we're, we definitely have a convergent series here, but we have a convergent series that the ratio test cannot prove. So what that means is that our ratio has to end up being one, because that's the only way that we could have a ratio test not being conclusive. Now, when is that going to happen? So you might recall that for ratio tests, you are usually seeing things like this. You're seeing factorials. You're seeing exponentials. Maybe you're seeing um, <clears throat> the, uh, the term is eluding me at the moment, but the factorials, uh, repeated multiplications where you don't have every single number, like maybe odds or something like that. These are all the times when you want to use the ratio test because that's when it works. So when do you when do you not use the ratio test? Let's think about the types of functions that you uh, the types of series you were evaluating before you learned the ratio test, and that's just ones using standard uh, polynomials and algebraic things. The ratio test does not help you on those. So if you take a quick look at the answer choices in this problem, there's only one of them that does not include any sort of factorial or exponential uh, in it at all, and that's b, so let's check that. So for b, we have the series from 1 to infinity, n over n cubed plus 4. Now you might think, this is a type of series that you had seen before you learned how to do the ratio test. <clears throat> it's just made up of polynomials, it's a rational function. Now, can we prove that this converges? Absolutely, because we have a degree 3 on the denominator, we have a degree 1 on the numerator, we have a 2 degree difference, uh, with the denominator being larger. P-series tells us that it's probably going to converge, so you would just need to compare this to an appropriate function, and it's going to converge. But let's show that you can't show that it's convergent by the ratio test. So if we use the ratio test on this, we take the n plus 1 term, We multiply that by <clears throat> the reciprocal of the nth term. <clears throat> and we don't need to worry about the absolute value here because n is always going to be positive. We have completely positive things going on over there. So we just need to figure out what this is as limit as n goes to infinity. And it's, perhaps you already see a problem here. The problem is, is that the top is degree 4 and the bottom is degree 4, if you were to multiply these together. And the, the biggest term, the fourth degree terms, are all just going to have coefficients of 1. Another way you could see this is, let's group these together in a slightly different manner. I'm going to put the n plus 1 over n together, and the n cubed plus 4 over the n plus 1 cubed plus 4 together. As n goes to infinity, n plus 1 and n are the same thing. This is going to be 1. And for the same reason here, if you were to factor or expand this out, the leading degree term would just be n cubed. You have an n cubed here. So the limit as n goes to infinity, this would just be 1. This is all just equal to 1. Which, when you get an answer of 1 using the ratio test, that means it doesn't prove anything to you. So anytime you're dealing with polynomials, and you probably saw this, for example, in the last problem that we did, number two, uh, for letter E, and you'll see this in future problems on this practice test even as well, whenever you're doing a ratio test and you have a piece of the function that is not an exponential or factorial, so anything that's uh, going to be an ln or a just an uh, algebraic polynomial, anything like that, the ratio test is never going to help you with those, because if you add 1 to that number, you didn't change anything about the limit. However, with factorials and exponentials, adding 1 to the n 
definitely does change the limit. So this is why B is correct here. So it can be found convergent, just not by the ratio test.